Good evening citizens. Sorry this video took so long to come out. I did hope Cloud Imperium would have ironed out a couple of bugs and made a couple of things more user friendly. However, well, you'll see. Sub now to see the upcoming pad guide and thumbs up to let the woman in my life know that I didn't just spend a big bunch of monies on a laptop to play Star Citizen instead of saving for travels across Australia. Speaking of which, from tomorrow until the end of this month, we'll be back on the road. With that all said, let's start today's vid. I have for you today a quick 3.8 to 3.9 comparison video to really highlight how 3.9 has benefited the controller user. Hello, I'm Ant and welcome back to Hassle Free Gaming. Analog your way down to the thumbs up and proceed to mash. In part one of Star Citizen on Gamepad, I wanted to know if the new personal inner thoughts feature would allow gamepad users to perform all primary tasks in the game. And that's the main mission of this video, along with my recommendations and a sprinkling of tips. So let's get to it. I'll answer this through a discussion of what 3.9 has not and has changed for pad users. Things that 3.9 haven't changed. Star map. Still unable to really use star map as a controller, so resorting to the mouse instead. However, if you have a PS4 pad, you can use a touchpad as a mouse. Here's how to navigate the star map with a mouse. Double click and right click, zoom out. Double click and left click on a planet, zoom in on that planet. Holding right click, moving left, right, up and down, move horizontally across the plane of the map. Holding left click and moving the mouse will rotate around planets and using the mouse scroll wheel will enable you to zoom in and out even more. In future patches I like to see the controller being able to use on the star map and the rest of the mobile class. Having the right and left bumper instead of the right and left mouse click respectively and using the right stick for rotation and the left stick for zoom. Top tip, double left clicking on a planet while scrolled in will zoom you out to see all the moons around that planet. The Kovalex mission box machine. On a pad, we are currently unable to interact with the screen on our Kovalex machines and thus not allowing the collection or delivery of mission delivery boxes. This has been the case for a while and I'm hoping with the new additions I'm about to mention we will see an update over the next couple of quarters which will allow for the pad to interact fully with the new UI. The new additions which pads can't interact with at the moment are terminals in the prison, and the new elevator UI in the Carrick and in the city of New Babbage on Microtech. This UI will be updated onto the other cities too. Personal inventory. When moving items like water bottles out of the personal inventory, it results in a crash. However, using a mouse doing exactly the same thing won't lead to a crash. So it sounds like an easy fix. And lastly, before I go into how 3.9 has benefited the pad user, we are unable to customise gun attachments. Again, this feature is fairly new, and with theatres of war around the corner, I'm sure we'll see this rectified soon. Things that 3.9 has changed. The biggest change that 3.9 has given gamepad users is personal inner thoughts. Let's now pick up from where we left off at the end of part one, personal inner thoughts or pit. Now pit is in game, but is it a glorified way to get out of bed or does pit bring usability to pads. First, what is PIT within the Persistent Universe? PIT allows a user to interact with your avatar, any accessory your avatar has, your inventory, your ship functions, and allows us to customise keybinds and set favourite actions for quick access. How does this benefit us? The PIT wheel allows a player to see every action we can do, having the ability to see how and what we can interact with in one place is great for newer players and returning vets and it means there's a lot less wasted time in menus looking for that all-important chicken emote. Speaking of emotes, I didn't realise how many emotes Star Citizen actually had until I got my hands on the pit wheel. In 3.8 if we wanted to use an emote we would have to go into the key bind menus and find the emote and remember which key it was bound to or key bind it to the pad and in doing so take up real estate on the pad, which is fine. However, for me, the pad wants to have important aspects of the game. I'll be going into greater detail about maximizing the pad use in the next vid, Star Citizen Guide to Personal Inner Thoughts, coming out soon. In 
3.8 to see and interact with your inventory, we would have to click on the left stick. Now, it's on the home screen of the pit wheel, freeing up one more button press, which I can now use for sprint. The Movie Glass. In 3.8, to use a Movie Glass and its apps, like the Star Map, we would have needed a keybind setup or press F1 on the keyboard. Now, however, we can access the Movie Glass and its two main apps via the pit wheel. Sadly, once we're on the main screen, we have to use a mouse. This could be a bug, as it kind of works sometimes. Multifunction displays, or in short, MFD. The MFDs are functional to a point. You're able to interact with them, but after the first interaction, like changing the fire groups of your ship's weapons, the game, or MFDs, won't register the pad, and in some parts, your cursor on the MFD will be stuck. So, sadly, for now, it's best to use a combination of mouse and pad. Go to Inner Forts, then. Using the directional pad will take you to a screen. By pressing left, will take you to the left-hand side screen. Interaction with the ship. This is where the pit wheel can really start to come into its own. In 3.8, if you wanted to raise landing gear, lock doors, we had to learn the keyboard controls or have a controller overpopulated with secondary controls. The only downside to this, and it's a big one, is I can't seem to use the pit wheel while seated using the controller. Again, on the mouse, it's fine. I'm sure over time this will get sorted too. If you are a returning player or new to Star Citizen, definitely have a play around in pit wheels whilst in the ship. If you're thinking of joining, use this code to double your in-game starting bonus. The ability to set favourites. One of my favourite things to come from the pit wheel is the ability to set favourites. And for me this is a huge game changer when playing with a pad. As we can select what's important for us, like the unequip and equip helmet for when oops I forgot moments, or your favourite emote, chicken. The weapon selection wheel. The weapon selector is amazing. It's quick and I'd say it's the most pad user friendly UI we have in Star Citizen. You have access to primary weapons, sidearm, utility like the mining tool and hacking chips, unarmed combat and a quick way to holster your weapon. This one's going to be really handy in fears of war and I have no problems with it at all. So am I using the keyboard and mouse less? Well. Yes and no. The introduction of PIT has taken more button presses off the keyboard and placing them on the pad without the pad going through the window after a double handed button mashing. This is great for bank accounts and players sanities everywhere. However, it's still early days for the PIT wheel and we're still required to use a keyboard and mouse for a good portion of actions. But nevertheless, the feature is extremely promising. I hope the future of the pit lies in the weapon selection. It's kind of like the commander roles in Battlefield 5. Your cursor is always on an option. It's simple, and once the layout is remembered, it will make for a quick swap of utility items and weapons. This, and the most of the features from the pit wheel, frees up buttons, and brings the pad more in line with the other methods of playing on Star Citizen, i.e. keyboard and mouse. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video or in the verse. Sorry this video took so long to come. Oh wait, to come. <laughs>